GPT-4 supported up to 8K, and in some cases up to 32K context length. Gemini is delivering our most intelligent. We love seeing what people build with Quad, especially with coding. Google has been at the forefront of many of those breakthroughs. For so long, I felt this pressure to keep up with all of the AI news. I felt held back, like I was always just on the verge of being on top of the AI thing before a million new models would be released. And so after building AI systems for clients for 10 months and learning AI for longer than that, my goal with this video is condense all of this information and to show you that most of the rabbit holes in new cycles of AI are just that. They're just hype cycles. They just slow us down and stop our progress. And so I'm gonna condense everything that I've learned in all the AI tools that I've built with and to show you that the problem is not that you haven't learned enough, it's that no one has shown you a clear, actionable roadmap for learning AI. And in this video, I'll break down the three biggest challenges holding people back from mastering AI in 2025 and the exact strategies I used to overcome them. First, I'll show you how to escape tool paralysis by building your minimum viable AI skill set that handles 80% of your needs with just a few core tools. And then we'll tackle prompt paralysis with practical techniques to embed prompts into your workflows and into your, you know, just how you're working on a day-to-day -day basis. And then finally, I'll reveal how to break free from what I call integration isolation and how to then transform your AI knowledge from disconnected tools that you're going to and using manually to systems that bridge between these tools um, in a non-technical way. So at the end of this video, you'll have a clear path to transform how you use AI without feeling overwhelmed or left behind. So without further ado, the first and biggest challenge that we all face is tool paralysis. You'll see product launches, new feature announcements, and model comparisons. This is most of the news around AI. And all of this hype makes it nearly impossible to identify which tools can actually boost your productivity. So here's a perfect example. A few months back when Quad 3 was released, it scored higher than GPT-4 on nearly every benchmark. But in practice, if you've been using GPT-4, it was probably still better for a lot of the tasks that you needed. Meanwhile, when we're trying to learn you know, how to use these research tools, Perplexity AI um, has been kind of like the go-to research tool for a while, but now there's search GPT and there's uh, deep research with OpenAI and all these models are coming out with research-based models. So we, it, we have trouble understanding what to learn and why. It can always feel like um, we're behind. And then if you look at the bigger picture, every major tech company claims to have the best AI model and to offer multiple tools with different capabilities. And this is how I initially fell into the tool paralysis trap. I lost motivation because I thought, well, if a new model and a new tool is gonna make this one obsolete in 30 days, why bother learning it? Because I'm just gonna, this is just gonna be wasted time, right? And so instead I developed what is called the minimum viable AI skill set. And the idea is that even if every AI tool out there is incredible and can help us, which, you know, ideally there's not every tool is actually applicable to us, we can't possibly become proficient in all of them. Therefore, we should ask ourselves, what are the individual needs that I have? What are the individual things that I'm working on on a daily basis? And which tools support just those things? And then basically take a blind eye to everything else. And so here's the process. Step one is identify your recurring workflow challenges. And so personally, I needed tools to help with writing content, researching content ideas, figuring out what is working, basically creating a system for how do I like make my content production process easier. And then step two is find the core tools that support that thing. So after testing multiple options on each category, I personally settled on uh, Claude was help was best for writing scripts, writing, you know, content posts and perplexity was best for research. And then I'm also using make.com to help automate some stuff. If we look here at like a minimum viable AI toolkit, we'll see um, that you have kind of the tour core toolkit and for most of the things that you'll need you're gonna need some sort of writing some sort of research um, and then maybe like some other tool maybe you need to create graphs maybe you need to create images maybe you need to create presentations and you basically uh, the process is basically what I would do is I'd say like okay here's a problem I need to solve with AI let me go to perplexity and then let me say um, like what 
AI tools can most effectively solve my content research problem. And then I would click enter and then boom, perplexity would go and it would research for me the specific types of tools that can go and actually solve this problem for me. So you can see here, it's going to load and then boom, I have all of these, all of these tools now. Um, and the idea is not like, okay, now I need to go learn all of these tools. It's like, okay, now I can maybe have it uh, prioritize even more and I can pick one or two of these and figure out which one solves the problem. And then I can just only do that one, right? So you identify what your problems are. You find a couple tools that could solve that problem. You narrow it down to one and then you only focus on that to the extent of all else and you block out all the AI news. news. And so, like I said, step three is master the few tools and so for me, I just committed to learning Perplexity, Claude, um, and Make.com to basically become extremely proficient in these three. And that helped pretty much solve all of the consistent needs that I had. Um, and so a contrasting example is that I was trying to learn how to build AI voice agents for clients. I discovered dozens of platforms to build out these AI, um, basically inbound callers where they could receive calls. Um, and... After doing that, I realized that it just wasn't worth learning in the first place. And I just wasted dozens of hours doing this. Um, and so if you want to do a deep dive into agents, um, as I believe agents will be the future of every single workflow that we must learn, there's obviously these tools that we're going to learn. Um, and then the kind of next step after that, step four is figure out how to build these into agents. It's a little bit more complex, but I built it and made it um, as simple as humanly possible for you. Um, and so if you go to AI Agents University um, in the description, I will show you everything you need to know about how to build your first agent. I'll give you specific templates so you can just upload these directly into your, into your platforms and get agents running in a matter of minutes. Um, and so the next thing that we're gonna be talking about is without going too technical, um, what we need to look at is, um, essentially how to write better prompts faster. So once you identify a few AI tools that fit your needs, there's still this invisible barrier that prevents consistent use. And I call this problem, the prompt paralysis problem. And here's what I mean. Maybe you have this incredible prompt that transforms your writing into clear, concise copy. Um, but you don't know how to write it. And so there's a couple different ways that we can do this. One is we need to understand what makes a good prompt. And two is we need to understand how to integrate that prompt into our workflows. So there's a couple different um, tools. One is we can just create some sort of prompt database like a Google Doc or Notion or something like that. Um, and we could just save all the top prompts that we use. Um, another is we could use text expanders. So I personally use um, text expanders for um, prompts and so what we can essentially do is if you're using a mac you can go into the system settings um, and you can basically create text replacements so if i go into system settings here um, without giving away too much text expander or no text replacement i mean so if we go to keyboard text replacements you can see that we can actually boom so if I want to create a new one right here, we can say replace at a copy prompt with, and then maybe we have a copy prompt. And so uh, one of the things that we can do here is we can use Claude to come up with these prompts and then we can essentially create these prompts inside of here. So it's like, you are an intelligent uh, copywriter, write me a, uh, make the following text more concise and write in a tone, in a stoic tone and voice. So super simple, but we can see that I just added that in there. And I believe, let me see what other ones I've added in here as well. Um, format output example. Um, and so, so you can see that now if we're using Mac and I believe there's other things like this for Windows, but I can just say copy prompt and then boom, I have the prompt loaded into my clock. Um, and then I can also do like a formatting guideline. So I think it was format Then I can do like output and then I could do like example and then boom, oops. Uh, but you, you can see the idea is like, let's say this is what makes a solid prompt. 
I can basically just have this preloaded every time I go into Claude. Then I can just fill out a couple bullet points here, maybe a couple bullet points there. Then my prompt is 10x what it would have otherwise been without something like this. And so the other hack here is we can essentially ask something like Claude to, to create prompts for us. And so one of the, the biggest hacks that you need to know is ask it to create an XML prompt. So basically say your objective is to help me write high quality um, LinkedIn posts. Uh, use the following examples. I don't have them on hand, but then you could say, uh, write me a complex XML prompt that achieves this objective. And so let's say like that's what I put into Claude and you'll see that it will come up with a really high quality prompt. And so then next time you can see like, okay, you are a LinkedIn content generator. There's industry, there's all this stuff, right? And so it's creating this really high quality prompt for me. And you don't even like XML just means like it's putting these little brackets around. It's basically just like bullet point lists. Just think of it as bullet point lists. So it's like the post structures list, the engagement techniques list. And these are all just like different no matter what the prompt is. So you can see it's literally pulling from the internet like top quality post. And what I could literally do is I could go in here into the text expander. And I could just say, boom, replace, uh, replace a LinkedIn post with this. Uh, is it is it going to be too long? So it might be too long here, but you can you get the idea, right? Let's say this is okay. Yeah, it's it's a little bit too long for this, um, but that's the idea, right? And so you can just ask Claude to write you a prompt like this, and then next time you want to go and write a LinkedIn post, you put this into a text expander. And you just say like, boom, that's the prompt. And then as it goes through this prompt, it's gonna be a really high quality LinkedIn post writer. So it's like, okay, boom, this one is, it's helping me understand it, but you'll see, yes, help me write a LinkedIn post. And because it has all of that context, it'll say, okay, now what is all of these things that we need in this prompt once you give us this information? then it will write this prompt. So now let me go uh, back to this. So we have, that's the problem, that's this text expander, and that's essentially what the prompt looks like. And so the next thing that we want to think about here is um, the essentially the third challenge, which is how do we actually implement these tools and what does that look like? And so for the the third aspect is, Maybe you want to learn some some AI tools every single day. Maybe you've decided that you want to learn Perplexity AI or you want to learn something like make.com. What you can then do is you can go and say, okay, I want to learn Perplexity. You set a five minute timer and you go, maybe you look up a video on Perplexity. But the, the thing is here is you don't want to spend too much time on learning. You want to spend the majority of your time on implementing. Um, because that's where the bulk of the learning will happen. So you maybe you go and you look up like uh, how you ask perplexity or or something like that. Um, you want to make sure that you're you're using these tools as as implementation and as actually building things. And so the bulk of the thing is you could just say ten minutes to learn and then ninety minutes to actually implement it. And so we've covered how to use tools to you know how to narrow down the skill set and how to not feel overwhelmed because if you understand that okay these three tools will solve 80 percent of my problems then you can let yourself just like surrender and not need to keep up with all the ai tools. all you need to look up is how do i use this specific tool and then once you learn it you just are using it and you're using it until it becomes second nature and so this leads to the last problem which is what holds most people back is many of Many of us treat AI tools as standalone sol solutions. Um, and what I mean by this is that most of us say like, okay, now let me go to Claude. Now let me go to OpenAI. Now let me go to Perplexity. And we don't understand that we can actually build these into 
workflows and systems. So we were stuck in these AI islands where powerful tools remain completely disconnected from our daily work routines. And I was guilty of this myself. I used Claude for writing for most of my work. Then I realized that I could actually have a content management system that was integrated with Claude. And so there's a little bit of technicality here, but it's really not that hard. Um, and so the good news is that there's really just one primary system that you can use to build these out. Um, if you've heard of Zapier before, it's kind of like Zapier, but I think it's actually easier to use. It's called make.com. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go in here. I'm going to log in. And so once you go into make.com, you'll just click this create new scenario button. And this is like the simple, if everyone talks about AI automation, this is literally all they're talking about. Um, it's basically saying, okay, where is your information currently? Maybe it's in Slack, maybe it's in Google Sheets. Like, okay, we have information on Google Sheets. And basically now what we're going to do is how do we run this into uh, Claude? Let's say we want to use Claude. And so all we're doing is saying, here's where I'm currently working. Maybe it's Slack, maybe it's Google Sheets. And let me actually just run this through an AI model. And this doesn't really matter what you put in here. Um, and so if I were starting over, I would immediately learn prompting the specific tools that I need to understand. And then I would build a very simple workflow in here. And so literally you just go in here, connect Claude, connect Google Sheets, and you say um, that exact prompt that we just used. So I would take something like this uh, prompt that we just used. And then I would go in here, I would copy this. I would go back into this module, I would paste it, and then I would go back into Google Sheets and I would um, update a row. And so this is how you start adding real world value for clients, is that you start saying like, okay, where are they currently building stuff? And how can I run that through AI? And I have lots more videos going really in depth on very simply how to build these out. But all you need to know is that essentially this is the the system where you learn a little bit of make.com, you learn a little bit of prompt engineering, and then you start just practicing it like hell. Um, and so that brings us to the the last and final point. And that's that if you're just you you want it to be immediately applicable. You don't want it to you don't want to endlessly, you know, learn from YouTube without ever actually implementing anything. You want to figure out what are the real use cases that I have in my life? What are the real problems that I have? And what are the specific school tools that will help me solve those? And then you basically just shut everything out. And that is the strategy. That is the roadmap for how you should learn this stuff and how you should develop AI skill sets in this age. Because ultimately, if you want to add value to people's lives, you're going to want to figure out how to solve problems. And if AI, if it's just like the cool new thing, if I were you, don't learn image generation tools, don't learn mid journey, don't learn video generation don't learn text to audio all of these are just like these cool new tools that everyone's playing with at the core of it it's a text generation you are learning how to take something maybe it's your content strategy your uh, maybe you're doing some sort of sales work maybe you're doing some sort of programming and you're learning how to use ai to more effectively do the tasks that you've already been doing so just think about that and focus on that and you'll be leagues ahead of everyone else. So I hope you found this valuable. Um, if this was something that you found incredibly valuable, um, stay tuned for more future videos. We'll go a lot deeper into prompt engineering, into um, building AI systems, into the minimum viable AI skill set. Um, but for now, um, just drop a subscribe and I really appreciate you for watching all the way to the end of this video. Um, so thank you and have a beautiful rest of your day.